This is the Horse Radio Network. Well, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. This is Glenn the Geek, founder of the Horse Radio Network and host of the few of the shows here on the network. And welcome to the 2017 All Hosts Holiday Roundup. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light From now on Our troubles will be out of sight Well, welcome back. This is, I think, our eighth or ninth all-host show that we've done here on the Horse Radio Network. It's our way of all getting together at the end of the year. These are all the hosts from the Horse Radio Network-owned shows. We can't do all the shows anymore because there would be 32 hosts on here, and eight is all I can handle. So that's what's happening tonight, and we're going to meet everybody that's joining us. It's kind of our version of a party. We have some auditor questions to ask everybody. They provided the questions for this year. And I'm excited to introduce first my wife, host of the Horse Tip Daily Show, producer of many of the shows, and has put up with me for 30 years, Coach Jen. I'm here. You don't have your sound effects tonight? No sound effects? I don't. I didn't. I, a little sound effects go a long way. I'm trying to... Limit yourself? Moderate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trying to cut back. Host of Horses in the Morning Show for the last seven years, going on eight, Jamie Jennings. Good evening. I was almost said good morning because I'm so used to getting up and doing this so early. <laughs> but it's like beer time now. It's weird. I don't even know where I am. You can actually drink illegally right now, Jamie. You're good. I know. Yeah. No, no Bloody Marys for the show. Well, hi, everybody. This is so exciting to have everybody back. I love this episode and um, it's always fun to, to do. I think I was in a bowling alley last year. So I'm, I'm home. Yeah, I'm settled that. in. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Host of the Dressage Radio Show, longtime friend. She's on her third month of doing the Dressage Radio Show, Reese Koffler Stanfield. Hi, everybody. Third month plus five and a half years. I yes, think, that's right. right. Yeah. No, it's three months, Reese. It's <laughs> three months. working on my three month yeah. anniversary. Exactly. <laughs> Reese said she wasn't going to do more than three months when I begged her. And yep. here she is, almost six years there later. I am. Yep. <laughs> She can't count too well. Yeah, it's nice to be with everybody. This really is. I really enjoy. So, really, the only time of year we all get together. So it's fun to see everybody or chat with everyone. So glad to be here. Host, her co-host of the Dressage Radio Show, our one and only Canadian, Philip Parks, (laughs) or not, Philip? (laughs) Did we lose him? We lost. Sorry. There he is. Canadians Happy are... holidays to the north. It must be a Canadian American translation problem. <laughs> uh, internet doesn't always work up here, so you gotta bear with me a little bit. Yeah, this time of night, all the neighbors come home and play games, and Philip loses his internet. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> that's, that's what happens. They're all, they're streaming Netflix, I think that's that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Well, host of the popular Horsemanship Radio Show and one of the nicest people in California, Debbie Laux. <laughs> They're hard to find. Hi. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Sorry. Merry Christmas. Hi. How are you all? Good to have you here, Debbie. Thank you so much for joining us once again. And host of the Driving Radio Show, resident veterinarian of the Horse Radio Network, part owner of the Horse Radio Network, Dr. Wendy Ying, straight from a party. Hi, guys. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Must have been an early party or not very much fun if you're back home by eight. Well, I had to leave halfway through, but you guys are worth it. <laughs> Is Dr. Kyle still at the party? Is he still there? No, he came home. Oh, okay. Just There's checking. a flu going around Sarasota, so we Ew. just like, you know, went in quick, held our breath, and then left. Prowled and left. <laughs> Well, and you know what? We have a newbie to the show this year. And of course, you know, we have to give an honorable mention to Helena, who left us uh, about halfway through the year. Of course, Helena was the first co-host of the Horse Radio Network of the Stable Scoop Radio Show. But she went on and got like a real grown-up job and then had to leave <laughs> and is doing a couple of her own shows up there in New England. So filling in and taking her place now is host of the Mary Kitzmiller episode of the Horses in the Morning Show and a massive contributor to the auditor room, Mary Kitzmiller. 
Hey, how's it going? We also needed somebody that actually rode Western to be representing here. So, hey, hey, Mary, you're representing. You're you're it. You're what we got. Oh, good. I, I feel a lot of pressure all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> the auditors absolutely love Mary because she's in there. And Mary is kind of that girl, uh, even sometimes more than Jamie. So it's they, they I think they can relate to you. Misery loves company. That's right. sister. <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be a trophy that I can compete for. I've been trying to get I'd that down for, that. for years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's perpetual. <laughs> well, let's uh let's get started with the questions. And I'm gonna start off easy. And this was a question that came in last minute from like three of the auditors texted me today. And because there's a new show called Heels Down Happy Hour, which is a lot of fun. And it's done by Heels Down Magazine, and the girls do a lot of drinking on that show because it's supposed to be happy hour. And they're always talking about alcohol, so I've got a thro- I'm going to throw in a question for you. They- Everybody wants to know what your favorite alcoholic beverage is. If you don't drink alcohol, what's your favorite beverage in general? Coach Jen. What's my favorite alcohol? Um, i got to say it's your standard uh, Seagram's wine co- Seagram's, yeah. Wine cooler, wine cooler yep. things. Yeah, Jennifer. You can tell I drink them a lot because I don't even know what they're called. <laughs> Those things. <laughs> Those things. <laughs> they come in a bottle. They're fruity. Yeah, it comes in a bottle. It's cheap. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Jamie. Gosh, you know I love beer a lot. <laughs> it comes in um, and and, <laughs> and and I'm an equal opportunity beer drinker. Like I like the dark, so like the lights. So I, I would probably say if I got to pick. An alcohol of choice, it would be beer. No particular brand is your favorite. Like you get it. Okay, every time. well, if you want to get particular in the <laughs> summer, I really prefer to drink something light. I can put a fruit in, like a Corona. In the winter time, I'm kind of like a Bass or like a Boddington's or a Guinness. But going over to Ireland, drinking Guinness there, I can't drink Guinness in America anymore because it's <laughs> terrible <laughs> comparison. <laughs> so I, I'm kind of a seasonal. Uh, I have seasonal tastes. There you go. And uh, she has that, those kind of tastes almost about everything else, too. Um, yes, Reese Cuffler true. Stanfield, you're drinking every night we do the dressage show. So what, what yeah, is your favorite? I don't know how I've gotten this reputation. <laughs> oh, I don't, actually. I don't. Um, in the beginning, I'm not going to lie. Yes, there was, between Phil and I, probably a lot of alcohol consumed. But, you know, as our nerves have gotten better, it's not necessary anymore. All the time, but it's I not am necessary, a wine. But it's still, it's yeah, still, but we, you know, yeah. happens. Jeez, <laughs> like, oh. so I'm from Kentucky, so of course I like bourbon. My husband really likes bourbon, um, but I am a wine girl for sure. I usually like a glass of wine while I'm cooking dinner. I call it like re-entry into normal life. Like it's just there's something about having a glass of wine, cooking dinner, and I can like sort of leave the barn and, you know, I don't really leave the barn since I live in the barn, but. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. away. Is there yeah. a favorite wine, Reese? Um, well, <laughs> I'm I'm also very non non uh, yeah, I like it all. Um, I like a Pinot Grigio, which is great. And actually, this time of year, because it reminds me of when I lived in Germany, I love Glühwein, which is a spiced warm wine mm-hmm. from Germany. And Yummy. it's awesome so i usually you know buy it's hard to find sometimes but when i find it i'm like the girl that buys all of it you know i'm like oh, I <laughs> but it's so delicious and there's nothing better than a cold night and having a cup of glue vine um so i'm on my last half a bottle so i'm saving it for christmas eve but um yeah so that's that's me so i'm a wine girl really philip what are you drinking in canada canadian whiskey Oh, there you go. I figured um, you were a whiskey almost, guy. I pictured that. Yeah. yeah. Almost all the time. Um, when I visit Kentucky, I have to have the bourbon. We, we I was on some bourbon tour last time I was there, actually. So I uh, brought some home with me. And then um, beyond that, in the summer, if I want a real refreshing drink, I'll drink gin and tonic and, or tequila, you know, uh, margaritas, you know. But. Mm-hmm. Most often, Crown Royal is my go-to drink. Mary Kitzmiller. Um, I am also a whiskey girl. I Fireball is the best. I can Ooh. drink it all yeah. year. <laughs> I don't care if it's summer, winter, whatever. Um, but in uh, if there's no Fireball, like Pendleton whiskey. Um, I was actually just at a wedding and had whiskey and cream soda, which was pretty good. It tasted <laughs> mostly like whiskey, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> risky and cream soda. <laughs> oh, there you go. I don't, what's that hey, called? By the way, uh. um, Mary, shout out to Pendleton's. Nobody knows that. Way to go. That's what. That's that's our whiskey of choice in the house. Is Pendleton's? Oh, sweet. It's nice, really smooth. It's good stuff. Yeah, Gosh, they have more than Western in common. That's Debbie, <laughs> what about California? The, Calif- the California girl. What are you drinking over there? Pinot Noir, yes, uh, yeah. I live in I live in Santa Barbara County area, so Pinot Noir. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. That was it fends was... the blood. It fends the blood. And Wendy, <laughs> Wendy. I'm trying to if I I know Wendy pretty well. I'm trying to guess with Wendy. And boy, I've seen you drink so many different things. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> well, I am a combined driver, so it's champagne. <laughs> Yes. And then I also like fox hunting, so it's port. But if it's before 1030 in the morning, it's mimosas. It's champagne with a splash of orange juice. Because <laughs> orange juice is good for you, and it helps right. you start your day. That's right. Get your vitamin C. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> sensible. That's very sensible. <laughs> the doctor. I have, to, I have to duplicate Wendy's because when I played the king for 10 years, when we did the New Year's Eve feast, there was a requirement that the restaurant had to have two bottles of champagne at the king's chair and they were mine they nobody was allowed to touch them and then i had those two bottles that night so yeah it's champagne if you sure. drank two bottles of champagne i was pretty out of it they out. were carrying yeah. me out of the the king <laughs> was carried off i'd like to see that it was we yeah, yeah, we're like yes it was the only way i could dance they did dancing at 11 o'clock and these old medieval dances and stuff and i terrible and i have no rhythm so that was the only play way i could actually do it uh, was to get drunk, and he thought I he worked thought. hard at it. <laughs> I took it seriously. All right, let's start. Coach Jen, what's your favorite breed of horse and dog? Oh, I have to pick a horse too. I thought it was an or question. Oh man, uh, dog is easy. <laughs> a standard poodle is my favorite, and my my favorite breed's got to be thoroughbred. I'm sorry, it's so predictable. Oh. Yeah. You know why, Jen? Because you're a hundred percent metal. Standard poodle and thoroughbred. Yeah. <laughs> I'm true to myself. That's yeah, true. they are kind of the I'm same, aren't they? I'm so yes. <laughs> they love rules and they love sticking to them. And everybody else should too. <laughs> Boy, that describes her to the my tea. entire being. I <laughs> Jamie. Oh gosh. You know, I think my my favorite breed of horse has changed. I I used to would have said thoroughbred hands down, but I I'm kind of a Mustang girl now. Yeah. I just couldn't love the two that I have more. And then as far as dogs go, I my house is not complete without two breeds. And I've had two repeatedly throughout my entire life. So it's kind of a thing. I always have a border collie and I always have a basset hound. Mm-hmm. It's like yin and yang. You got to have both. <laughs> What does that make her, Wendy? <laughs> yeah, that makes her. Uh, she's an Earth because she is a total enabler. She loves everybody, and she's a she. She is uh, like takes care of everybody. There you go. That's pretty much yeah. describes it. I That's why she, she loves I them all. Much yeah, I think Absolutely. that describes it. <laughs> Wendy, you're I've, batting a thousand here. I've heard <laughs> enabler before, but in different connotations. So this is good. <laughs> This is in a good way. This is in a good way. Good way. Yeah. Reese, your dog is sitting at your feet. I assume that's the breed. She is. She is. So I, we have a Newfoundland. Yeah. She just, we, 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 she heard me get on the show and she like banged at the door. She was like, I want in. So she does. She sits with me every time I do the show. So she's the size of a pony. Yeah, (laughs) she is. She's 120 pounds and she's just a wonderful breed. If you don't know the Newfoundlands. Uh, And I also grew up with labs. So I love labs as well. Um, And then for the horses, you know, I would say, oh my goodness. um, I have probably the most Dutch warm bloods uh, just because that's happened. That's I have a good contact in Holland, <laughs> so that's who I usually buy. But I, I really, you know, I, I have all kinds of horses in my barn, and and I love really not that discriminatory. If they want to work and do their job, I I want to participate with them. So, uh, Wendy, that's a good answer. What do you say? My favorite horse. No, 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 no. What do you say about Reese? I'm going to get to you. Oh, later. oh we're oh, on a roll well, here. Oh. That's easy. Okay. <laughs> She's a dressage rider. She's no dressage person. She's a fire. So she's like superstar. Like she is out there. Miss Diva Erica Kane. So she is there. 
<laughs> so her dogs cannot be divas. Her dogs need to be Earth, and they need to love her no matter what. And when she is stressed, they better come over there, and they better love her and make her feel better. That sounds about right. <laughs> I was going to say, Philip Parks, don't you dare say anything. I think okay. you call hey, never mind. Movie. Never mind. <laughs> okay, I think I'm a you nailed fighter. it. Like, you nailed dog, it. My dog to spend time with me. It better be spending time with me while it's making me feel better, because that's what dogs are for. <laughs> That pretty much nails nails it. Yeah, she yeah. did nail that. You're doing yeah, you're three for it. three here so far, Wendy. I'm like crying. I know. So hard. You know what? I say this all the time. Why did I spend like nine years in school? I should have gotten an associate's degree in psychology and been charging people a hundred dollars an hour <laughs> to tell me about their bad marriage. I mean, <laughs> And or tell the them what dog. dog they need. Yeah, that's right. dog, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that would be the hot new thing now. Dog counseling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Philip. <laughs> Let's try Philip and see how you do with him. <laughs> I actually really like, uh, I think my favorite horse, and I've never owned one, is a Fjord. Because they got a really cool ha- hairstyle. You can yeah, they do. Yeah. They, do. <laughs> they, they seem really easy going. And, 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 you know, I've I've helped people with their Fjords before, and I really kind of like their... They have a you know a playful attitude and 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 I like that. And then uh, dogs, I don't know. I like a lot of dogs. Um, lately, people's corgis really make me laugh. They seem also kind of clownish and cartoonish, and you know how they have the front end and then the back end is doing its own thing half the time. And I really <laughs> like that. So. I think it's like you know the things that make me laugh. That's that's the best. Okay, Wendy. Okay, okay. <laughs> Philip, I don't know you well enough, but I think that you are a um an earth. An earth um you know, earth people are like happy go lucky and like the, the you can't really get them riled up, but if they feel like someone's being unfair to them, they can be kind of stubborn. Like if you feel like someone's treating you badly, you're like, you know, you're not even going to argue about it. You're just going to walk away. You don't argue. <laughs> just walk that away. Pretty, pretty good. Is that true, Reese? Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my wife just gave you the thumbs up. So that must be but, approval. So also, you go really well. Like the Labradors uh, go with Reese. Uh, like, okay. like the fire and the earth make super great partnerships because um, you uh, play off each other. So that's a great combination. Look at like you guys. love that. Yeah. Like you don't have to be like out there all the time. That's too exhausting. So like if you know, like, okay, I'm kind of tired today, but Reese will take, you know, she can go be the deep <laughs> and I can just support it's her. It's but true. if she's having that's, a tough that's how day, that we're works. Like, oh my God, <laughs> I, can't find, I can't handle this right now. Then you'll be there to support her. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's pretty that's right on, actually. <laughs> that is right on. on. <laughs> this that's is scary. Right <laughs> <laughs> Debbie. It was your text in the mail, your hundred yeah, bucks. Yeah, 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 really. I want exactly. Wendy's crystal ball. That's wall. done. You, you just did the Peg the Dressage show. Sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm about to be shrunk. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, so me. The uh, I love the Boston Terriers. They're just so adorable, and both my kids have one, and so we have we have grand dogs, and that's we we share them. So I love the Boston Terriers. They're really smart. They're like compact and adorable and horses that's just hard because the I always competed on quarter horses so I just love the quarter horses I love their heads I love their athleticism I love everything about them but if you want to talk pretty horses or pack horses it's different (laughs) (laughs) okay Wendy try that one (laughs) okay this is Debbie right yeah Debbie right yeah Debbie um, I've always thought this about you, you, and I think this a lot about really good trainers that okay. you're metal like Jen, because horses love metals. Like most horses are either fire or they're wood, which we haven't discussed yet, but woods are like kind of aggressive and they, they're a little bit hard to handle, but the way like you have to do everything the same way, like you have a set of rules that you live by. Probably. This is how you do everything every day. Whereas Glenn and Reese and I and Jamie have a difficult time, like just even like paying attention to our everyday lives because <laughs> we're buyers. So horses kind of get aggravated with us. Sometimes they have to like put up with us. Um, 
but also the Boston Terrier is an interesting breed because Boston Terriers, those things are wild. They're fire all day long, right? Yeah. They're like always true. wiggling their whole body. Yeah. So a lot of times, uh, metal people, animals, whatever they, they, the way Reese and Philip, uh, with the earth and the fire go together. Also metal and fires like that because the fireness, um, brings out the, the joy of a metal. Mm. Like sometimes a metal gets too like inside themselves, but then you're like Boston Terrier comes over and it looks so cute, blah, 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 blah. And you can't do anything, but just say, Oh, you're adorable. I'll forget what I'm doing now. I'll cuddle you. Exactly. So cute. Wow. So you cute. are I'm just so on much fire. About your job. <laughs> just on fire, way, baby. Thanks, <laughs> Wayne. I didn't invent it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, to do it well. Let's go to Mary Kitzmiller. <laughs> um, well, as far as dogs go, I think I've probably owned all the dogs at one point, um, but I've had, <laughs> I've had chihuahuas more than anything else. And I so love cute. them because um, I'm amused at the audacity that they have. I mean, every single chihuahua I've ever had has walked in the house and they're like, I own this place and you will cater to me and where is my food? And um, they they come off as dumb because they're impossible to potty train. They don't come when called, but I think they're just very, very indignant. So, uh, so I kind of like it. I dig it. Uh, I love my chihuahuas. And for horses, I tell you what, it is such a toss up between Mustangs and quarter horses. I'll probably have to go with quarter horse just because the love of my horsey life is a quarter horse named Guthrie. And you guys have, uh, I know the listeners have probably heard a little bit about him and he's just a big doofus and I love him. And um, so I'll say quarter horse. All right, Wendy. All right. You know what? Knowing you from Facebook, because I, I watch you on Facebook every day. You always come up on my feed. I was 100% sure you were going to be a metal, but you're not. You're just like Jamie. You're at Earth. Because mm. chihuahuas. Come on. <laughs> you know what? I've been a large animal vet since 1999, okay? For years and years. The worst I've ever gotten hurt in oh. veterinary medicine, I've been bitten by two chihuahuas in the last year. They're <laughs> devil babies. I've heard devil. that from more vets. They're you ask babies. any vet what's the worst bite they've ever gotten, and most of them will tell you chihuahuas. Or yeah, vet tech. Dogs. Yeah, or most dogs techs. will, like, snap at you, but they don't really want to bite you. Chihuahuas are like, I'm going to bite you. I'm going to bite you as hard as my little mouth can bite. <laughs> <laughs> They're devils. <laughs> and like you, you love your chihuahuas. You think they're so wonderful and I'm sure they are, but like you're an earth person cause you are very nurturing and I'm sure the horses in your training, um, maybe that's why you like Mustangs too. You're drawn to Mustangs, uh, because they do because of their background need a lot of nurturing. Whereas somebody like, uh, you know, like us fires get a little impatient and they're very difficult to train for people like me and Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep getting thrown in this. Um, <laughs> You're going to have to come down with me. I think that pretty much described Mary. I know Mary pretty well. I think you, you pretty much nailed that one too. Dr. Wendy, your turn to analyze yourself. Oh, no. Okay. My favorite breed is the Irish Draft, of course. And my favorite breed of dog, you know, I I have to tell you, this has changed because before I owned chickens and ducks, my favorite breed of dog was Jack Russell's because I did breed them for many years. But now that I have these pet uh, baby, you know, soft animals, I my Jack Russell's are, you know, murderers. I can't <laughs> tell them. I, my new dream dog is a um, a Cavachon, which is a Cavalier King Char Charles Spaniel mixed with a Bichon Frise. Wow. So what's that say about you? Well, first of all, I guess it says I'm a diva. <laughs> <laughs> so my dog yeah. has to fit into Big my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a diva. And my dogs have to suit my lifestyle, unfortunately. <laughs> and, and her boyfriend and everybody else, too. So uh, there's that. Including you, Glenn. Including me. I was just going to say that, actually. <laughs> so me, I, I've, I've said this a thousand times on the show. All the listeners know it. Percheron for the horse and Greyhound for the dog. And she's over here actually sleep racing right now. 
with her little feet going. Jason Bunny. She's Jason Bunny's right now, and oh, we baby. and poor Glory is blind as a bat right now. So we have a blind <laughs> sight hound. Oh, yeah. oh. keeps running into things. So I don't know. Go ahead, Wendy. Well, I mean, you are a you are definitely a fire, but in a, like everybody's a mix of something, right? The water, I haven't really talked about the water, but water um, and people, uh, they can be great leaders because they can organize all these people, right? So they kind of, you, you know, think ahead about what's going to happen. So they're like the chess master. So the fact that you did this whole um, acting thing where you were the king, it's kind of like this, the the Horse Radio Network I don't know. I mean, I can barely do twice a month for the driving radio show. I don't know how you'd like juggle all these shows and then do this new one where you go like traveling around. But to be able to juggle all that stuff, that's very it's organized, but not in an organized kind of Jen way. Like if Jen had to organize your your schedule the way you organize, it would make her insane. It would. Yes. <laughs> would. Let's make that it a does, does. actually. <laughs> yeah. It does. <laughs> but you can just say like, oh, like, okay, I've got it all, you know, you've got it all under control. So that's fire where you don't mind being out there, but also water, whereas you, you organize things without being bossy. Well, that was very interesting, Dr. Wendy. Thank you for that. And it looks like you just made yourselves about, made yourself about $800. Right there. Nice oh, awesome. Okay. Well, you can send it to drwendying.com. <laughs> we weren't planning on doing that, but that was kind of fun. We're going to take a break for a commercial. We're going to come back and we're going to go with, uh, we'll go with a more serious question at, that Janelle asked. Uh, and by the way, Mel was the one that asked about favorite breed of horse and dog. So we'll be right back. We all get in a rut when it comes to shopping for horse supplies online. If you have not tried horselovers.com yet, then you are missing out on one of the world's largest online tack shops and all the best brands like Noble Outfitters, Ariat, Turn 2, Tough One, Professionals Choice, Weaver, and many, many more. Visit horselovers.com every day to see their daily deals and flash sales. Horselovers.com has everything for the Western and trail rider. So get on over to horselovers.com today. Day and save. Janelle wants to know, and it's the only real serious question we have tonight, where do you see yourself in five years? And boy, that's a toughie. See, I had to think real hard about this because being a metal, I had to decide where do I want to, where do I want to be in five years and where will I likely be in five years? <laughs> They're different. <laughs> so I came with the, where do I want to be in five years? So I'm going to be fox hunting three days a week and the other four days of the week, I'm living peacefully and uh, hanging out with my ponies and my husband and my dogs and maybe two kitties having closed both of my Skype accounts and set both of my Gmail accounts to send everything to the spam folder. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. Jamie, we're going to need a new producer uh, in five years. Just make make a note of that. I feel like she just quit. I do too. Take this job and shut it. It's early retirement. It's early retirement. I think we just lost a host. All right. Well, Jamie, I'll go to you next. Am I going to need a co-host too in five years? Oh, gosh. I hope not. I actually kind of need this. This is my... the, The horses in the morning is, as you know, fairly therapeutic for me. I really don't hold anything back. So I actually kind of need it between therapy and uh, the horses in the morning and riding horses. I'm, I'm cleansed and I come home as a put together human being. I know you, you always wonder why my husband is married to me. Uh, It's because you guys all help me balance. And then when I come home, I'm balanced. (laughs) So I don't know if that makes sense, but, um, in five years I plan to be, you know, planned, you know, Lord will and then the Creek don't rise. Uh, I plan to be a certified money instructor trainer. Mm -hmm. Uh, I plan to have our farm in Oklahoma done. I plan to have an adopted child by then. You might maybe in five years, (laughs) maybe we'll see (laughs) the way it's It's going now. (laughs) It's a plan. And, uh, I hope to have 
an indoor arena, <laughs> the, all these, nice. these desires. So, so five, five years to me, I feel like this is going to be a big five years and dear God, Glenn, I swear you better still let me host this show. So. <laughs> Well, I'm not going anywhere. Well, Jennifer may quit, but we, you and I'll still be together. I just texted Jemmy to see if she was free for full time. So. <laughs> Produce. Considering you're about to have to be a sugar daddy for a fox hunting wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to work forever. <laughs> oh, I've already planned on that. <laughs> Reese, are you in the Olympics in five years with that fancy horse I, of yours? You, know, you Amen, got it. Sister. I mean, that's that's my goal is to ride internationally again. Um, so that's where we're working toward every day. So that would be the plan. So, And this is a horse fact, that could do that, isn't it? Yeah, we hope so. Uh, you know, you never know. I may need like five more uh, just so we get one up there. But we're working really hard. So that yeah. would be the goal is to ride internationally again in five years. Well, weeks. if you're in the WAG or the Olympics, we are all going to be there cheering you on really loudly Ooh. and embarrassingly in the stands. <laughs> oh, you won't embarrass me. I'll be like, there's my homies. Hey, guys. <laughs> like, I'll, be, I'll be excited. So, yes, absolutely. That's my goal in five years. So. Philip, I don't know the answer to this for you, so I, I, I'm curious. I wouldn't mind being exactly where I am now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you know, I'm loving living the life, and I have a great group of horses, and lots of wonderful clients, and my lovely wife, and you know, the whole thing is you know working really well for me. So, amen, brother. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, for you. I feel like no a problem being now. happy. <laughs> <laughs> We are a little like older a than Philip, though. You're allowed to have your retirement dreams. Uh, <laughs> dreams. That's what he just said. Dreams. Dreams. Yeah. 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 That's like reality. Yeah. yeah. I got that one. I was like, that yeah. was a dream. Mary, I'm curious about you too. So am I. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I read over the email and came up with very good answers for everything, and this one I glossed over because it just makes my palms sweat. Um, <laughs> but I would like to get, uh, back into some hardcore showing, uh, you know, I, I do the Mustang things and training competitions, but I'd like to, uh, try my hand again at reigning in RHA, um, and that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Debbie, are you in with Jennifer fox hunting and retired? <laughs> Come on, Danny. I don't like Come serious on, questions. I read these questions. So I was like, where do you see yourself in five years? Same place I saw them today. In the mirror. That's it. That's, that's it. Day by day. You're not going to answer? That's it. Okay. <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> I like it. That's Honest. Good. That's funny. Yeah. You know yourself, Debbie. Um, Dr. Mm. Wendy. Um, I'm with Philip and Jennifer. I mean, I'm totally happy living in Sarasota. The horses are retired. I go fox hunting occasionally and I don't have any goals. <laughs> don't have any goals. No I don't goals. have any goals. No goals. And for there's you. a uh, quote from a movie uh, from Dodgeball. You know that movie, yeah. Dodgeball? Well, it's a movie. classic. Yeah. I find if you have goals, you just get disappointed when you don't make them. So That's true. not having goals, I feel totally satisfied. I'm saying I'm completely wrong. But... Setting goals, you can limit yourself, girl. That's exactly. Right. That's right. That's why we don't do resolutions either, because <laughs> the go. same amount of disappointment. <laughs> God, you know, I had a tough time with this one, and uh, I think my answer is I'm just doing the shows. And But there's one big difference. I do want to be uh, just doing shows. If it, it, My ultimate dream in five years would be just hosting, and everything else is taken care of by somebody else. Somebody else is doing the sales, nice. somebody else is doing the grunt work, and I just show up on the mic with Jamie and have a good time. And the way podcasting is going right now and taking off, you know, who knows? Sky's the limit right now yeah. where we'll be. What is your favorite podcast other than horse, any horse, forget horses. Do you have a podcast that is your favorite other than horses? And I'll, I'll start with Coach Jen. I don't know. Do you have one? Oh, yeah. You, I would think you'd know this one. Oh, Micro? It's a toss. Yeah, it's a micro. That's that's probably the one. <laughs> yeah. It guarantees if there's one in there, I'm listening to it. Yeah. yeah, micros. Yeah. By the way, he is number seven right now on all podcasts wow. in the world with uh, six million downloads a month. Dirty job. Dur yep. Gosh. Dirty jobs, micro. No, it's not dirty <laughs> it's not jobs. Dirty jobs. <laughs> it's not dirty jobs. <laughs> it's the way I heard it. It's the way, the way I, heard I heard it. it. Yeah, it's a very good podcast. Uh, Jamie, I think I know your answer, but go ahead. 
It's the way I heard it, Mike Rowe. I'm one of the six million. Yeah, but you have a second favorite. <laughs> um, My dad wrote I, a porno. Oh, God. I wasn't going to bring that up. I was going to try to keep it clean. It's a holiday show. <laughs> So there's two there's two podcasts that I subscribe to. <laughs> One is the way I heard it, micro. It's great five ten, five minutes, you know, no problem. And um, my dad wrote a porno. Yeah, you and about thirty <laughs> oh, million that other. That was funny. My dad that wrote a porno. Funny. Just went over hundred and twenty million downloads. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm all of those. So basically, um, for those who don't I'm know, it sounds terrible. Um, it's a guy who his dad wrote a graphic novel and it's so terrible that he sits around with friends and reads it and it is hysterical it is. and it's not for <laughs> it's children. It's adult. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to play it around. I think one of the reasons that one's so funny novel. too. I don't think there's is... any any illustrations, are there? No. Well, gra- <laughs> <laughs> verbal, yes. It's, just, it's a podcast. A novel that is graphic, not a graphic novel. Right, correct. Okay. <laughs> Mary, what were you going to say? Gonna... You've listened to it. Oh, yes. I I just started it and it is hilarious. Um <laughs> and I think one of the one of the reasons why it's so funny other than the obvious is uh that they're British and so you've just got that really quick-witted dry sense of humor in, mixed in with just terrible pornographic novel. And the woman is... on there is hilarious. She is oh, yes. she's so funny. <laughs> she is terrific. She's the best. She is good. Reese well, it's kind of boring, but I really like NPR podcasts. Oh, you are a dressage girl. <laughs> well, I, so I, 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 hey. I have a master's degree in international commerce, so I feel like every once in a while I should, like, use what I went to school with. <laughs> so I try, like, you know, if, if this writing thing doesn't work out, I could go get a job, so I should probably know what's going on in the world. So that's what I do. You yeah. are in international commerce. You import those warm bloods all the time. I do. I do. I I, I do a lot of, uh, I do. I use a lot of, actually, the diplomacy part of my degree is actually what I use the most. You know, angry, uh, angry client and an angry, like, North Korea are essentially the same. (laughs) (laughs) They're all shooting missiles. Yeah, basically, it just depends on, you know, what kind of missiles they're shooting. But it's basically the same concept. So it was, it's very useful from that. (laughs) <laughs> standpoint. So I'm kind of boring. You guys, are, I actually am learning something just listening. Your podcast sound um, way more potentially entertaining Reese, than mine. you have to try My Dad Wrote a Porno. You will love it. <laughs> I am sorry. You no, will love it. I know I'm you gonna, yes. Philip. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've listened to it. I've listened to it. I, I'm uh, a season into it. Then I had, I've taken a break. <laughs> it was all a, all a bit much. You know, Shower. Too much for me. And my Canadian sensibilities, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I listen to um, sports. You know, I, I like my baseball. And uh, this is a season for fantasy football. So I'm listening to those every week and, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a little boring, too. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's what I like. All right, cool. And uh, Mary? Um, I'm actually also into NPR, like yes. This American Life and Radio Lab. Yeah, Radio Lab is one of the most popular shows ever uh, in podcasting. It's podcast. really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very popular, for sure. Uh, who we got? Glenn? Debbie. You, uh, yeah. I was going to uh, say. Oh, go ahead. Don't don't forget to do this, Glenn. And you're going to have to think because you have so many podcasting friends. You only get to pick one. I know. So let's hear Ooh, Debbie's and then we'll go back to Glenn. Pressure. That's true. Actually, I was going to use that kind of as a spread. Podcast movement. Glenn and I went to podcast movement in yeah. Los Angeles. And I tell you, it. there are so many great ones. I don't subscribe to any. Um, really? But I skip all over. I don't. Oh. Well, uh, you said non horsey. Sorry, yeah. I'm limited there. Yeah. But, but, but I, you know, I try to find different subjects. I actually search them by subjects. So that's where I'm bouncing all over the place. I like the spiritual ones. I like the life lesson ones. I, I'm all over the place because of pod- podcast movement. You guys, you know, it's fascinating because we listen, Glenn, you remember that we listened to the guy about the porn. Yep. Thing. That's right. They yep. were there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 They were all there. I mean, it's just amazing. You just bounce around. So, yeah. So non-committal, I guess. Yeah. Wendy. Um, well, my two favorites have already been said. I love the Mike Rowe one. And I also love Radiolab. I love the editing of Radiolab. 
And I keep saying if we had more time, I would love to do something like that with our show. But it's, you know, that was way too hard. Do you know how That's many people work on favorite. Radio Lab, by the way? Probably tons. 20. Wow. 20 I, people, I, one show. From doing the podcast, and I used to listen to that all the time, but I didn't even realize how difficult it was to record it and how the way they make their transitions like really tells the story and and makes you so involved. So and you can I do think that when Radio you have 20 Lab people. is my favorite. <laughs> you yeah. Can do, yeah. do you know the yeah. average NPR, the big NPR shows? The big NPR shows cost a thousand dollars a minute to produce. Well, you know what else I love about NPR right now doing podcasts is for years, when we first started out, they were so anti-podcast and thought we were so stupid, blah, 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 blah. And then remember, Glenn, I was sitting in my car listening to the, the mm-hmm. show on NPR. I can't remember what it was, but I called you and I said, you have to listen to this <laughs> because they were saying podcast is the way it's going. And we as NPR can't not podcast, but the the NPR um, executives were not allowing them to podcast. That's right. They were, remember they were trying to get them not to be able to, to do that because it was hurting their numbers in advertising. And then it just, I mean, people wanted on demand service and it, they pushed it through, but that was a real breakthrough for podcasting. It, it really was. It, NPR is the one that really turned a, turned a corner. It wasn't a HRN. Unfortunately, it was NPR. Uh, mine is <laughs> Different simple. Initials. Mine is, there's only one I, I catch every day and it, and Jamie, you have a job because of these two. And I've said this before is the Bob and Sherry show, which is a naturally syndicated radio show that puts out a podcast, put it, puts it out as a podcast. And I've been listening to them for like 15 years. And the Horses in the Morning show is designed after their show. And I got to meet Sherry at Podcast Movement, sat beside her in yeah. one of the sessions, and we got to chat for about an hour. So were you such a geek? Were you I like was, stalking her? I was. <laughs> Debbie will tell you I was stalking her. It's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she knew the story because I had written her an email and told her that uh, Horses in the Morning and the whole Horse Radio Network is really a result of them. And she was flattered by that. And she actually wanted to be me. She came up and gave me a big hug at the, at the show. So that was kind of cool. So the Aww. Bob and Cherry show. All right, we're going to take another break. We're going to come back. Uh, we're going to ask you guys your favorite interview of the year, and then we're going to do a rapid fire, just some silly questions. We're going to do rapid fire. So we'll be back. Dr. Rose's Remedies Skin Treatment Salve and Spray are 100% all-natural products. They are anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal. Dr. Rose's are made with all human-grade ingredients and are safe and effective for treatment for all manner of cuts and scrapes on your horse. And Dr. Rose's is the must-have product here at the Horse Radio Network headquarters to keep PT Scooter's delicate white pasterns free from dew poisoning and scratches. Ask for Dr. Rose's at your local tax store or feed supplier or visit them online at drrosesremedies.com. That's drrosesremedies.com. Coach Jen, you don't really do an interview show except for joining us on the morning show. Do you have a favorite interview that you were part of as a producer or host? You know what I do have? And Katie asked this, by the way, Katie and several other people. I have a, a favorite segment, and my favorite segment this year has been uh, Jill Stanford's Cowgirl in the Kitchen that we <laughs> she do is a trip. each month. <laughs> they are so much fun. She is a trip. I agree. She's a trip. And I'm hungry afterwards, so I have to go get a snack, so... Thanks for ruining my diet, Jill. (laughs) (laughs) All right. How about Jamie? That's a tough... We interview so many people every year. Mm. You know, when this came up, I couldn't even think. I I started going back through horsesinthemorning.com to see who we'd interviewed because, I mean, there's one or two every episode, two to three sometimes, and it goes on, you know, three days a week for me. So I I couldn't even decide... Um, I just love Leslie Wiley on the show. Mm. She makes my world. I love having her on every Monday. But if I was to pick, the one thing is kind of a weird uh, thing, but Radiothon to me, to have Radiothon and to have the interview with 
the guy involved with foster care mm-hmm. and yeah. to see everybody come together yeah. and donate money for a cause that was important to me for the, you know, for one, I brought it to the table and Glenn, you just jumped on board and everybody got so involved in it. And I sent them the check and I just yesterday got a thank you letter in the mail from them. And then, mm-hmm. I'll they read it on the show. Three thousand dollars. Were they happy with that? I assume. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, very excited. You know, I mean, that's that's money that they'll have to buy Christmas for foster kids, and it was just amazing. And I, I, I just as far as what I did the entire year on the show, that to me mm-hmm. is the most important thing that I've done. Uh, yet. So that would be my answer. And kudos to you for bringing that to the table because it wouldn't happen yeah. unless you did. Yeah, it wouldn't happen without you. Yeah. 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 You guys How about awesome. Reese? Thanks for supporting it. Yeah, you know, I, I was thinking about this. We we do. We, we get to interview so many cool people all year. And uh, one thing about our show now is, you know, we can call up Robert Dover and we can call up and, and, and they answer and they want to come on and it's a lot of fun. It's a little and different than three months ago, right, Reese? Yeah, a little <laughs> bit different than three months ago. Um, but we did a sh- it, it, I, I was, it was a little hard because, well, Jen was with me and I, we had Robert Dover on a couple weeks ago and I was a little nervous because I didn't have Philip. He was on vacation and I was nervous. But um, I really enjoyed uh, Christine Traurig on the Radiothon. She just, it was just a fun interview and she really relaxed and and told us about her uh, Christmas as a as a young, you know, young lady in Germany, and, and that was really fun. So, uh, but we really are. It's such an honor to do this show, and and it's really cool that people didn't come on. So, um, but Christine Traurig, I think, was my favorite of the year. Philip, is that yours too? Or you have a different one. Well, that that was a really nice interview, and she gave us some memories from from Germany and, you know, the, the kind of sparked your imagination about, you know, her and she, you know, lived in a traditional house attached to the barn. And I really like that whole idea, but, uh, you know, Jim Kofer gave us a great interview earlier this year that I really liked. Um, he brought a lot of, you know, he brings a lot of enthusiasm and he was talking about the showmanship part of dressage, you know, and doing his freestyle and just kind of putting it all out there for the, uh, U S U.S. National Finals, and I'd uh, seen the ride, and so just bringing him on and talking about it, really, uh, that that kind of gave the ride new life, you know, in my mind, and, and how he was riding it, and um, yeah, so I really enjoy, enjoyed Jim Coford coming on the show, and we have so many great guests all year, and I'm sure if this, you know, this episode happened a little earlier in the year, there's lots of, you know, episodes that we did early that I kind of forgot now. And, you know, we, we, it's really fun to do what we do. And I'm really glad that uh, we continue to have so many great people on, uh, on our show every, every year. You guys do a great job with the interviews too. Mary Kitzmiller. Um, yeah, I kind of did the same thing where I don't remember everybody. Uh, I, I, I remember every interview being great, but, uh, I'd say one of my favorites was, uh, I interviewed Megan Warlick who just won the, uh, extreme cowboy racing world championships, which is a pretty big deal. And, uh, I, I like that interview just because she brought so much energy and she was really funny. And when you have someone like that to interview, it just makes, it makes my job really easy and I really enjoy it and it just kind of flows really well. So that would be it for me. That's a good one. I, I like that interview too. Debbie, you've interviewed some amazing people this year. Uh, mm. I don't know how you're going to pick one. Oh, oh. I, I actually, I couldn't. I, yeah, sorry. You know, you sort of, you think about them, but then you think there's aspects that you remember. And I don't remember all the, you know, all of every interview. I wish I had one of those brains, but I, I, I like the radiothon. I, I, I like it because it's kind of scary you know, like you make us commit to this date and then, then you set this bar really high from last year, <laughs> and, you know, and you're like pressure. That, what she's trying to say is then I'm a pain in the ass for the next I'm month. Not, not, <laughs> it's, just scary. it's like scary movie, you know, like you kind of want to watch, but you're scared like the whole time. And then when you finally get through it, you're like proud of yourself. You got through. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's super exciting and terrifying at the same time. So I think Radiothon is my favorite 
That's it. Don't encourage him. I know. I know. Yeah. Don't Avoid with your dad. Twenty four hours next year. Twenty four hours. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no. Boy, thank you, Jen. You're thank the one that has to do it, Glenn. Yeah, so no, whatever. it ain't happening. Yeah, no. I know. Yeah. Show up for an hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor Wendy. Uh, this is always the hardest question every year. Um, I agree. Radiothon is exciting and fun. But I think one of my most favorite episodes was with um, uh, Bob Longstaff mm. that we did just recently. Yeah. Uh, when, you know, Frolic Weymouth passed away last year. And he was such a fun He's guy a in driving. Right? Yeah. Uh, DuPont. DuPont, that's right, yeah. So he lived in um, near Brandywine Valley, and he was a big um, proponent of conservation land and saving land so that people could appreciate it, you know, have equestrian events on it and, you know, keeping land open. And, and he was instrumental in doing these conservation easements. So people and, you know, we might not have this problem in the future now with the de death tax uh, being extinguished, but you know, if someone had a great big farm and like five kids inherited this great big farm outside of Pennsylvania, and now this farm is worth hundreds of millions of dollars to developers, the kids had to sell it to pay the taxes on it. And um, so this program enabled people to sell the development rights and then keep it in conservation easement. And that's what made that area of Unionville, Pennsylvania, so beautiful for horse people. Uh, but besides that, Frolic was actually a super fun guy. You know, he loved driving. He was... Uh, he didn't do any competitive driving. It was just recreational. He said people like from Michael Jackson to Wayne Newton on his carriage, and he drives them to the races with his four in hand of hackney horses. And he used to get so drunk that he used to have to pay his babysitters to drive him home. And I mean, he was just a larger than life guy. And uh, having Bob on our show and sharing some of those memories. Bob was his uh, Coach. longtime coachman for 30 plus years. It was really fun having him come on and, you know, reliving some of those memories and sharing it with some people that maybe never got to know him. So I, that was one of my favorite shows. I, I, I like that one, too. I had a tough time with this. I counted today. I, I hosted over 400 episodes this year, which probably means 600 to 700 guests. And I came back to two things. One is I absolutely loved doing the nightly, and this isn't even our podcast, so that's sad, but I absolutely loved doing the nightly Facebook lives during the Mongol Derby following Leslie. Uh, I, <laughs> that was fun. Oh, I loved it was so too. much fun just doing that whole following of Leslie while she was being tortured over there because it was partly my fault yeah. she was there in the first place. So I just <laughs> love doing that. I love meeting Devin Horn and, and her doing it with us and everybody that helped out with that, her husband. And it just was fun to do. And it was fun because the listeners were so into it. They were so into it. They, we had three or 4,000 people watching that every night. So it, I liked it, I think, just because it was so much fun for me. It was different, and it was fun. And I also absolutely loved uh, – I'm loving doing this new show, even though it hurts a lot. Um, <laughs> it's painful. Uh, I'm just loving doing the new show. I love the Disney episode we did, and I just – I think I just liking getting out of the office for a while uh, every month, getting out for a day or two and actually leaving my chair. So I'm just loving that one too. But, you know, there were so many guests, it's hard to pick, but I, the Muggle Derby coverage would be mine for sure. It was, And thank cool. you, Leslie, for – you know, sacrificing your body for our entertainment. We really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> body and mind. <laughs> she still hates me. Um, <laughs> all right, rapid fire. We're just going to go through these quickly. You're going to answer, answer these questions in rapid fire order. And that is your favorite TV show of all time, your favorite horse or your favorite movie of all time. We'll just say movie. Uh, we're going to do those two and then we'll wrap. So this is Carol and Brenda ask these. So favorite TV show of all time, favorite movie of all time, and we're going Coach Jen. Uh, TV show Mythbusters, favorite horse movie, Horse with a Flying Tail. Oh. oh well, that's a good one. All right, Jamie? Favorite TV show of all time would have to be Lost and Man from Snowy River. There was oh. nothing that you took it. You took it. Yeah. Uh, you, you can have it too. <laughs> it's okay. We're horse people. <laughs> uh, Reese? Oh, uh, 
TV show. <laughs> uh, uh, Travis said I like that show Below Deck. It's, it's classy. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, we watch that a lot. It's great. Um, and then is it a horse movie or is it yeah, a... Any, I'll go any movie. Whatever you want. I, I like Steel Magnolias. Huh? Hands down. Oh, Ooh, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yes. <laughs> so? I cry every time. I know, me too. Uh, TV show, I have no idea. Uh, Sopranos, I guess. Huh? And then the uh, horse movie, Black Stallion. The best. Yeah. All right. Mary, this is tough. Mary's a movie aficionado. so I know, this is making me really nervous. But uh, So, TV show, hands down, Game of Thrones, easy. Um, if we're going horse movie, it... it it's not a horse movie, but it got me started on horses, and I'd say The Last Unicorn. And if just any movie, I would say Ridley Scott's Gladiator. Oh, wow. Ooh. I wasn't expecting that. All right, oh, Debbie? Good... <laughs> uh, t- TV, um, I love the Lassies. I thought about this, and I thought, I, I, I just love all the Lassies. All the Lassies. Uh, and then uh, favorite horse movie, I will, since Snowy River is, taken i will do no, you can use it it's not taken it's i can not... oh yeah I, you know the current one though is the war horse was pretty cool yeah. actually because it's on stage but who's seen it on stage yeah, I like I, but it, they turn into a movie yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it was a good movie too it was a good movie yep uh wendy um my favorite tv show is a netflix tv show and uh Dr. Kyle and I are addicted to the people versus OJ Simpson. I can't <laughs> stop watching <laughs> <laughs> because it was so fun living that every day. And now you can like stream it on demand. You don't have to wait every day to see what's going to happen. Uh, you so, don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know but it's, it's so Still Spoiler alert. What happened. <laughs> uh, so, um, and my favorite movie of course is black stallion. No mm. comparison. Mm. All right. Uh, mine is favorite TV show is MASH. I, I would say that if I had to pick a horse movie, it would be either War Horse or Sea Biscuit. I really like Sea Biscuit. And it then if my favorite movie of all time, and it's because of when I saw it and how magical it was at that time, and that's the first Star Wars. Because I think I was yeah, like 12. I you know, oh. and, it, you know, everything was the magical. Yeah. yeah. And, that, you know, that was the first movie of that kind. It, it, that, now we watch <laughs> it and go, wow, that's really. But at the time, it was it was just great. So that would be that would be mine. Real sure. quick, what did you think of this Star Wars? Because I don't, I haven't seen it yet. We're going one, this yeah. weekend. Oh my gosh. Best one. Don't in say 30 anything. Years. It, it's say awesome. nothing. You'll love it. <laughs> I will. I <laughs> you liked you, it a lot, you, didn't you, you Mary? <laughs> I loved it. Loved it. So we're gonna like it. Um, you know, the tomato meter on Rotten Tomatoes is different than what the critics thought. Critics loved it. Audiences have not loved it as much, but it's really good. You'll love it. Did they have the terrible actor that played uh, Darth Vader, you know, as a young kid in the last one? It was awful. Anakin Skywalker? Yeah, yeah he was terrible. He was Glenn, the worst actor I've seen in 20 years. Glenn, he is misunderstood. That is the whole point. Oh, he he's awful. He is a terrible I actor. Would. I just watched <laughs> it again the other night, and I went, how the hell did he get that job? I've got the best. Oh, he's what? He's this is getting awesome. complicated. That's why I, defend the, I defend the actor because he is a good actor. It was a terrible script. Terrible movies. Just we don't we don't talk about the prequels. How was prequels was Jar Jar good. Binks in this new one? I really him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I need one of those little porg things, and there's there these little puffin bird things. It's it's like it, it erases all memory of Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Well, I'm really excited because I'm taking my nephew. We're all taking my nephew on Friday, and it, he has never seen one in the theater. Oh, cool! So I'm. It's going to be, I'm sure, awesome. Just because he's going to be so excited. So. Mary, 3D or not? I did 3D, and I couldn't tell like that there was a big difference. The only thing I, reason I did 3D was that was the only time where they hadn't sold out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cool. Well, this has been fun again, guys. Thank you so much for another great year. And I, there, there is a there is one thing that we have to bring up that we we haven't acknowledged in this episode yet, and that is Horses in the Morning won the best podcast of the year by the American Horse Publications. So, pretty proud of that. And that was Yay. yeah, congratulations. So, congratulations. And Debbie came in second with horsemanship. So we kind of nothing like second. Kissing yeah, your sister. we kind.
kind of took the <laughs> top two in that one. Yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun. But, so proud of you guys. But, really you know, Leslie, you. go back to Leslie, was the one who really, it was her episode that made it. I mean, that we won on. It was uh, one of the episodes that she Lady was Martin. on. That's right. She was That's hilarious. Right. Yeah. So uh, we got to give Leslie some credit there. But yeah, that that was a big thing for us this year is to win that award. And it was the first year they've done a podcast award. And there were 20 podcasts that entered. So uh, good job, Jamie, Jennifer, and Leslie. And uh, it, 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 I think it was well-deserved. I do. That was a fun show. It was fun. And Debbie, we felt like crap that we did beat you? you that night. We did. Ja- oh, Jamie didn't even want to go up and accept so the award. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I said it when beating Debbie at, at something is like kicking a puppy. It's like... <laughs> 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 oh, terrible. Yeah, it was really nice. fun. There were no losers here. There were no... <laughs> it was really fun. It was really exciting that podcasting was in it, right? Yeah. That was the first year that they'd done fun. podcasting in that, those awards. So that, we were very proud of that. So congratulations. Yay. And uh, we're looking forward to 2018 coming up. We are adding two more shows in January and February, and possibly three. Um, for now? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, we're very excited about the growth and what's happening. And, uh, you know, and I'm very excited to be working with all of you for another year. Aww. Congratulations. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy, Glenn. Happy New Happy Year. Holidays. Happy New Year. Hey, insert yeah. pop, cor- cor- cork popping sound. Yes. <laughs> Cheers! Yeah, yeah. Well, she talks about him, dreams about him, thinks about him all the time. She's got to have him, be lost without him. You can see it in her. What is it? What is it with girls and horses? She says, Now when I was a young girl, they were my whole world. They were my one safe place. And now that I'm older, I still lean on their shoulders. Without his magic in the 